AMT's 1966 Oldsmobile 442 Convertible. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, uh, GM fans, and welcome back down to another GM Garage unboxing at Monster Hobbies right here, where today we're going to be looking at AMT Ertl's 1966 Oldsmobile 442 Convertible. Now, this was a, another cool kit built back in the days when AMT, Monogram, and Revell <laughs> were all trying to compete for model kit awards against Tamiya of Japan and the Japanese wave that was coming out for highly detailed kits. So this is another one of those great, beautiful models with uh, over 130 or more parts. I lost count, but it's an amazing kit. So if you love these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first to see it. And let's get this great video up to 100 likes. And now without further ado, let's go back in time down to the Oldsmobile showroom and see what's in the box. For 1966, Olds gave its F-Series a more aggressive appearance. Coke bottle rear fenders appeared for the first time. The 442 package was distinguished by its own grille, tail lamps, and recessed front fender scoop. So now we're just going to take a look at the AMT 1966 Oldsmobile 442 Convertible Kit. This kit came out in 1996 and is all new tooling for the time. A very cool model. And if we just move the camera up here, you can see that there was a, a couple of different models that they used. Um, this one was painted yellow, has a black vinyl roof on it, or the up convertible top. You got your nice Oldsmobile motor painted in the authentic gold color. And of course our interior in here. This is a kit for, a moderate kit for ages, uh, sorry, skill level 2 for ages 10 and up. Requires glue and paint. There's a hundred parts to this kit. The end of the box looks very much the same. And there's that yellow Oldsmobile on the side of the box. Very nice looking model kit. Oops, there we go. As you see, it's got the wire wheels and the tail lights and everything. It says build with convertible top up or down, opening hood with detailed engine and authentic 442 emblems. So again, a very nice model kit. So let's move our camera back here. And we can take a quick look by removing the top and here we see the Oldsmobile instructions and then we have these bagged kits in here with pretty much all the parts in one big bag. We got a little invitation to get a taste of the blue printer. And there's our decal and decal sheets. We've got our glass just sort of lying loose in there. There is the cutlass convertible body with those coke bottle fenders in it. We have these nice tires here which have the web inside or the the blank that you have to cut out with your hobby knife. Then we've got a choice of two wheels the wire wheels on the box and then these custom ones of course our chrome is in a nice plastic bag to keep it from getting scratched there's our other tire and then we have our red tail lights so let's just move this to the side and we'll get into a review of our plastic bits before we get into reviewing our plastic pieces we first have to look at the instruction sheet so we know where our parts are going to go so first off, we have, of course, the nice photograph of the real 66 Olds 442 convertible up top. And as we open or turn the instructions around here, you also get, of course, the call number, but I don't think this is useful anymore. But here we get a full paint code, uh, charts of what we have. So, for example, the letter A is flat black, B is gloss black, etc, etc, as we go down. So we have to look for these little squares through our instructions to know what colors to paint the model with. So as we open this up, 
basically just a two pound of fold. We first get into our 442, the uh, 400 cubic inch motor for the year. Just this is pretty nice uh, built motor. Lots of detail with it. You of course get your cylinder head covers with the rockers in the top. And then our intake manifold, the engine block in two pieces with the pistons on the top of them, which is sadly covered up by our our uh, our cylinder heads here. And then we have our front timing chain cover, the water pump up top, the starter motor, and our oil pan. And it says to paint them B. The transmission is, or the engine block is F. You know, and on we go. So as we take a look at our next panel here, we have the belts and pulleys going together. We have an air conditioning unit here, as well as our uh, pump here, and our alternator right there, going onto all these pulleys. There's our chrome air cleaner, four barrel carburetor with a little mounting plate underneath. Then we have our valve covers, our exhaust manifolds and then of course our pulley assembly gluing on and our fan going in the top pulley. Moving across to panel number two we have our wheel assembly and the, there's our tire there and you get your choices of the wire wheels with the little knockoffs on there or the custom wheels and then of course we've got this here for mounting to the suspension and our wheel back right there. Moving into this panel we have our nice interior and this is typical of the 1990s AMT model kits. We have the floor chassis pan here as well as our rear bench seat, the buckets in two pieces, the console, the shift lever, little tachometer going on here, and then looking down here, we have the separate molded door panels, and this gives you the best trim. There's even the armrest with the little push down tab to open up the door, the wipers, or er, window winders, pardon me, our dashboard with all the pedals hanging off. Oh, another type of tachometer thing up top, so that on the console must not have been a tachometer. Anyway, there's our steering wheel and our column with the lever all going on to the chassis pan. And then here you get a separate frame with the exhaust pipes and the rear exhaust pipes. There's your mufflers there. And they show this all going together nice and easy. We get down to our suspension components and we have the full Oldsmobile suspension going on here with our lower A-arms, the spindles for the wheels, coil springs, stabilizer bar and the upper a arms going into the back we have the struts and stabilizers the differential the little sub struts in here rear coil springs nice differential on there shock absorbers differential cover to the back very well done then there's everything going on the chassis and here we have our radiator hose and radiator going on as well as the wheels. Remember just to use a little dab of glue here on the points so that you don't glue your wheels shut so they won't rotate. Turning this over to the back panel. We have a separate firewall and we've got the glass with the, the sun visors as well as the rear view mirror and there's our steering column going down. And then it's got these parts that you're supposed to remove and then the the back goes in and you'll notice there's little tabs here tabs also on the chassis pan which will you have to bend this up a little bit and pop them in but it gives you a nice tight fit in there then we get into our under the hood components so there is our brakes right there the power brake reservoir the upper radiator hose and windshield washer bottle as well as a battery and then we've got our nice convertible options. So you've got the top up with a separate piece of glass or the top folded down. There's our rear tail lamps going in, the bumper, chrome bumper, and our license plate 
and the decal for the license plate. So it all goes together. There's a rear view mirror sitting on the side as well. And finally we get into the front and this is kind of cool because they actually have this like a real Oldsmobile. I own a 72. So there's the uh, headlight trim which is separate on my 72 as well as on the 66. You get your headlights, put them in there and then you bring this in and pop it onto the front bumper. Now the reason why they did this of course is so that you could paint in here with your flat black and whatever and if you get a little on here it doesn't really matter because you're going to scrape the chrome there and on the back of these add your glue and it'll cover it all up and look really nice. It's nice to see that the bumper actually has the open areas in here as well as your turn signal lights there and then you've got your license plate and the decal goes on top as well as your hood dropping in here. So let's take a look at the plastic parts now that we've seen the instructions and carry on with our review. So first off we're going to start with the body for this car and boy is it ever a beautiful sculpt. This of course is our 1966 Oldsmobile 442 and in this year Oldsmobile the 442 usually stood for four speed four barrel carburetor and dual exhaust but in 66 the 400 cubic inch motor was the hot news so it stood for 400 four barrel dual exhaust and my cutlass in the backyard is a 221 <laughs> two barrel <laughs> oh no 231 two barrel three speed transmission single exhaust pipe <laughs> uh, I wasn't so lucky but anyway uh, so we've got a bar of plastic that says remove, one on the windshield of course, to, and one in between the wheels. Now this is to give it support so when it comes out of the mold it, it reduces its chances of being twisted. And uh, here we have some nice detail, the 442 script, which, there you go, that, nice and readable. The trim that goes up and around the wheels. And then, of course, um, another thing there, <laughs> an emblem. And uh, you notice a nice detail here. They actually have the little pieces of rubber plastic that were kind of new at the time, that clipped into the front here, as well as nice rad support. The windshield wipers and the grill on there. Very nice detail. Here's uh, across the back trunk lid. You have Oldsmobile in the trim. 442 up there, the rocket emblem, and of course these are the s slots and everything for your interior tub and all that to link into, as well as the chassis pan. Nice detail here on the up top boot area. There are some sink marks in here, but hardly anything. This was a really good attempt back at AMT days in the 90s to get rid of all the major flaws of the earlier kits that were in their lineup. So again, a very nice looking model from the 1990s team at AMT. Next up we have a bunch of the body components. Here of course is our hood. There's our convertible top, the top up. And then we have our suspension pieces down below. And there's a lot of nice detail on these parts. I'll just lift this up into the camera for a second and you can see that they have the proper texture molded into the canvas top as well as the angle bar here and uh, if you turn it over it carries on underneath the hood with the braces in there a nice padding sadly there are some sink marks that we have to fill in the back ones here might be a little hard to get to the front's not so bad underneath our hood of course we have the fireproof matting as well as a bunch of mold marks, unfortunately. But it does have the upper hood latch catch in here, which is quite a nice detail. The top of this is really nice, nice and smooth. And then we get into our suspension here, and you can see all the nice detail on there. Just like the real thing, only smaller. <laughs> and then there's a lot of nice little holes in here for mounting the springs and everything that comes after. So again, very nicely done and a real blessing to the serious model builder. And in case you are wondering how well the hood fits, here we go down below. Now it is kind of bent sitting up, but I'm careful enough with it. Here. Ooh, 
I don't want to do that. But anyway, you can see that there is no gaps, that the fit is nice and tight. And here we have the chassis pan, which is quite detailed as you can see. You got this gigantic fuel tank sitting in the back, and then we've got a bunch of the accurate type rubber bumpers and whatnot, which would be helping in the rear suspension. Nice smooth area here. Then we've got our inner floorboards and lots of holes, but they all get covered up by the frame and exhaust pipes and everything else. If we turn this over, you can hear it's got the carpet texture in here with the big holes for this for the console and your seats, door panels and everything else. There's a little box up here as well. But again, quite nicely done from AMT. Of course, you can't have the body and chassis sitting out in space without a good frame to mount it on. And AMT once again has captured the full perimeter Oldsmobile frame of the 60s and even early 70s with this great mold right here. And as you can see, you've got the spots for your springs and shock absorbers up top here. And again, not too much to be said, but there's your coil springs there for your front suspension, everything going on. And underneath, it's a little hollow in here, but again, this gets all covered up with floorboards. Nice area for mounting your engine. There is a little bit of a few mold bumps in here, which again, you can take out with your hobby blade. But once again, very awesome detail. And here's a look at how the chassis pan and frame go together. As you can tell, all the little holes here get covered up by the frame. And there are a lot of pins on it underneath. And I actually noticed there's a little sink mark on mine right there. But again, that can be covered over. But as you can see, a nice good fit. Well, I'm dealing with this sprue arm here, but there we go. A nice good fit in between with the frame and the chassis pan. So you know that this kit will look good once it's mounted and glued together on your shelf. And here we have our engine components as well as our dashboard and license plates and the under the hood details such as our radiator and firewall. Now this is a fully done up Oldsmobile with all the factory luxury components to it such as our right here our air conditioning we also have a power steering element here and an alternator our engine has the nice cylinder heads in it frost plugs and our beautiful transmission sadly our engine the cylinders get covered over by our cylinder heads but the nice little detail here is they have all the rockers in place for our valves it's very neat there's our exhaust manifolds, the bottom of the carburetor, our, cylinder, our intake manifold here, the nice fan, six bladed fan that goes on top of our belts and pulleys. There's our front engine cover, or timing chain cover with the water pump on it. Our starter motor here. There's our firewall and our very nice dashboard with all the pedals molded separately. It's very cool. So let's just bring this up into the camera and see everything. And there you've got your nice factory gauges with those cool speedometer and other instruments on there. Very nice. Of course, you can see most of this is all dashboard and instruments. You get a very tiny glove box on here. Just enough for the map and the owner's manual. Uh, nice to see all the standard pedals sitting there, including the parking brake. Then there's our engine block. You can see the nice detail on that, nice and crisp. Cylinder heads. Actually, if you turn this over, no, nope, maybe not. I was thinking you'd see the tops of the domes, but that was a Ravel thing on some of the very hard to build kits of the earlier 60s. There's, look at that, that's just beauty right there. Beauty, eh? And then there's our firewall. Look at all the wires and everything that would be really nice to dry brush quite a lot of cool components from the 66 olds in here but again a, a very deluxe model as a starting point so i'll just put this back down and we will continue on examining the other parts 
Next up I'll be looking at two parts trees side by side just because this one's kind of narrow and can fit in our video picture frame quite nicely. <laughs> Alright so we have our convertible top which is down and again you got some nice texture on there. There's our valve covers, our steering wheel, the center console. These are the braces for your rear axle, your shock absorbers, steering column with the lever, and our power brake reservoir, as well as the other piece of the carburetor. And then here we've got the rear parts of our exhaust pipes. And then here's the front parts of our exhaust pipes with, of course, the man of, or the uh, mufflers sitting here. Sometimes I get tongue-tied in these videos. Okay, here's our steering console or column going down. There's the differential back cover, differential, and our <laughs> drive shaft, and then more of those little braces for the rear. So let's just bring this up to the camera. Here, I'll move this one out of the way. Let me just take a look at the oops, the top there. You can see the nice stretching on the fabric. So very, very much a lot of attention to detail on this kit. Look at the steering wheel there. You can see the nice little details on those arms, as well as there's a little, little bit of a ring here. So that would be your, your two color steering wheel. And then look at the console there. You can see a lot of nice detail inside. Just turning this over. There's not a lot of mold marks or whatever to deal with here. So again, it should be able to go in on your cutlass very nicely. And now taking a look at the pieces from underneath here. We'll just take a look at this differential. You can see all the nice crisp detail on it. There we go. Just bring this slowly back to the lens. So very nice indeed. Nice how they have all the little clips and stuff for hooking it onto that, the braces and whatnot. So again, very nice detail. Very well done for AMT. So again, I'm doing another double sprue here because we're going from our suspension components into our interior. So we'll carry on with the suspension. So here, of course, we have the um, stabilizer as well as our front and rear springs. Then, of course, we have our wheel backs. And these are kind of nice because they give you the accurate kind of drum brake look to the back of the wheels as well as our spindles, the upper A-arms, radiator hoses, our seats, and then these little guys are for going in through these holes to, of course, lock your wheels onto the spindles and rear axle. So I'll move these out of the way, and we can take a look at the nice crisp detailing inside the wheel backs. It's almost like there is something there. Um, there's the upper A-arms. Look at the nice upholstery work on those bucket seats. And then the second piece of the buckets, the backs. I'll just turn this over, you can see those there, which will go down into your holes in the wheels. And then we've got our little radiator uh, hoses and whatnot. So moving this out of the way to take a look at the detail on the springs. They actually look pretty much like real springs and our stabilizer. So again, a lot of cool details from AMT on our interior components and suspensions. And finally, we have the final components for our interior as well as more of these little hoses. There's our rear seat and the separate door panels. And again, very nice detailing. Let's just bring the seat up here so you can see matches the front seat. Again, a very nice work. Having a little trouble focusing with the camera. Okay, so there we go. You can see the nice pleating on here and everything. And then taking a look at the door panels. And this is what really, it was nice with the AMT kits of this era is that the, they had all these separate door panels because most of the model kits, as you've seen in these reviews from the 60s, have the dreaded interior bucket. And there's no way that you can get the nice crisp detail in the bucket as you can by molding your door panels separate. 
Like for example, take a look at the window winder levers here. Or cranks. The window winder cranks. I mean, look at how great they are. You even have ashtrays molded in the inside door panels here. You got the Oldsmobile logo nice and crisp. The armrest, that's a little lever for opening the door. You pushed it down, pops the door open. I mean, perfect. And you can get in here with your paintbrush. Some of these cars, I think maybe it was more in the 1972 Oldsmobile that I have. This area would be carpet. And I'm not too sure on 66. It's been a while since I was in the Oldsmobile Club too, so it's not like I can go and check out somebody's car anymore. But anyway, there's nice pleated details in here and everything else. So again, very, very nice detailing from the 1990s AMT model building team. Next up we have my favorite components. You know what those are. Chrome, baby. If it don't go, chrome it. <laughs> All right. But anyway, we have our wire wheels here with the knockoffs, knockoff hubcaps, which are really nice. You, of course, can put in a little bit of Nuln oil from Citadel Games Workshop. Paint it in here, wipe it off. You get the nice chrome popping up as well as the depth of the black oily paint. We have our nice Oldsmobile 442 air cleaner. And this thing is cool because you don't need a decal sheet on it. You can actually use your paintbrush and get in there and paint the 442 emblem as well as the Oldsmobile one. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. We've got to look at a real air cleaner for that one. But anyway, there's our wheels there, the custom ones. We've got our shift lever, tachometers and whatnot, the mirror, the emblem, there's our Olds grill, the separate headlights, and the rear bumper. Now let's take a look at this up close, just so you can see the great effort that the AMT model creation team put into this. You can see the nice grill in there, all kinds of beautiful things open in the back, like I said with the instructions there, just like the real car. Look at the headlight bits are actually just like they're supposed to be, square, and then you drop your round headlights into there. The quad headlights. We had <laughs> the high beams when you click the button on the floor. They all come on, all four of them. All four running lights, anyway. And then, of course, the rear bumper. There's the wire wheels. Look at how cool those are. Yeah, really excellent work. So again, hats off to that AMT design team. And here's a look at our clear components. And if you see here, it almost looks like the windshield is cracked, but it's not. It's just a reflection, as we'll see in a second here. Anyway, there's our front windshield with the sun visors molded in, our rear window, and the quad headlights with the windshield washer bottle molded in clear, which is a nice touch as well as our red rear tail lights. So let's just move the tail lights down here. And now look, see, there it goes, just a reflection. It's not a crack in the glass. But look at the nice sun visors up there, really cool. And then you'll notice that this is sticking out. That's so that the windshield can pop into the frame. And then it's got the holes underneath for mounting on the body. And then we've got a nice little detail in here around the window for our frame on the rear window and then check those out and then we'll just take a look at our rear tail lamps and you can't really see it on this side but on this side there is some nice detail in there a little bit of a mesh which of course should be somewhat visible through the outside so again very nice attention to detail now we have the new tires from AMT for this time period, which were the Firestone Super Sport o Wide Oval Tires, which were really cool. They had a nice groove in them, which you can add in red paint or white wall tire, whatever you want to do. You just put the paint in there and then wipe it off. They also had a brand new tread on them. And they still do. These tires are still available. But what AMT wanted to do was freshen up molds and everything and replace the original tires, which were in the kits for a very long time. And those would be, of course, our Goodyear Polyglass GTs, 
They're not bad tires, of course, but they were in everything. So AMT wanted fresh new tires, so they replaced these with the Firestone Super Sports, which gave a lot of model kits and model kit builders new options for wheels and tires. So again, these are very cool and I'm glad they're in here. Finally, we get a look at our decal sheet, which is not very big. It just consists of three license plates, six, of course, for the front and the back. And here we have Minnesota, Indiana, and Colorado. And of course, these are great, nice little license plates. W3442, 66 Olds, and AA1231. So, again, nice decals. And I hope you enjoyed this look at our 1966 Oldsmobile Convertible by AMT Ertl. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing video of the Olds 442 Convertible from 1966 made by AMT Ertl. And before we leave for today, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound the notification bell because I know you don't want to miss next week's great unboxing. And of course, if you do pound that notification bell, you will be the first one to know what's in the box for next week. So let's get this video up to 100 likes, and until next time, I'll see you on the road out there.